everyone, welcome back to episode 14 of the Canary Room. Uh, must start, as always, with some thank yous. Huge, huge thank you to everybody who has donated to the channel. Um, really, really do appreciate it. Your donations have helped uh, fund some of the on-the-road trips that we've already seen and some that we've still got to see, so stay tuned to that. So, Sean Byrne, Martin Gentles, Mike Burling, of course, Mike, Brian Lahori, Debbie Stout and Antonio, thank you so much for your kind donations. If you're able to, on the homepage of the YouTube channel, little donate button there. Well, what have we got in store? Well, it's uh, an action-packed episode today, back in the room. Uh, thanks for all of your kind words on the Terry Kelly episode. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And, uh, well, over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're back on the road again. We're going to see uh, Mr. Bernard Williams, um, an incredible man and an incredible setup. And then we will be down taking a trip to Norfolk to go and see Nick and Annalyn Barrett and their family uh, and the Glen Arif pedigree livestock. So not just canaries in that one, but uh, cows and sheep and, uh, and pigs too. So something very much to look forward to. On today's show, of course, we'll catch up with the Fives. We've got the Native Diaries, the Norwich Notebook, New Colour Corner, and because it's the first episode in July, the to-do list as well. As always, grab yourself a cuppa. I've left mine in the house. Sit back and enjoy the show. Well, look, it wouldn't be the Canary Room, would it, without its ups and downs and rounds and abouts. In terms of the fights, it's um, it's kind of petered out the season, it's fair to say. The uh, the fawn hen we've got is just hatching some eggs today. Um, the rest of the birds, well, didn't get the kind of yield from the nests that we set that you saw in episode 12 that we'd anticipated the weather's been up and down and, and, and really, really quite challenging. So as a consequence, although we've got some really good numbers still in the nest, we haven't got the numbers that we probably expected. There's some real quality with the five though, and for me, it's all about the quality over the numbers. So we've got the birds really in a, in a kind of um, a halfway house position, really. So the majority of the adult birds are now in the flight cages. There's one or two still feeding. Um, you can possibly see it's maybe just a little bit out of shot, but the cockbirds, which you can probably hear, they still sound in really good voice. The cockbirds that I'll retain for next year, certainly a number of them that I'll retain, they're in double breeding cages now. So they'll stay there as they go through the molt uh, and as they overwinter. So we'll keep an eye on them. They've got a little bit more space to fly, but they can molt out in isolation. They're an important part of the stud moving forward. And I want to make sure that they've got every, every opportunity to develop. In terms of the uh, the fives then, well, what I've done, all about order in the canary room, uh, the top two rows here that you can see just in shot, they've got some of the first and second round young in them. Now, I have been taking some birds away to wean. Um, we've seen how we wean canaries, seen how we wean birds. We've uh, got a few birds, a few more dark birds in there as well. We've got a flush of light birds to come through still to wean away. But this row here and this row, this is where the darks are. Now they're ha housed in single cages in pairs. In this cage here, there is a, a trio of nest mates. Um, I will move one of those when another cage becomes available. And then in the next two rows, then that's where the light birds are. Um, I'm really pleased with the light birds this year. I think they've come on leaps and bounds. So they were strong last year. They've improved again this year. Uh, a little shot of one of the um, the birds in a, in a training cage. And, and it's showing, albeit very early on, it's showing the kind of quality that I want that bird to be showing at this stage. So we'll keep everything crossed for that, that it, that it moves on, it moves forward, and it develops in the right way. That's really, really important. So these birds, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with what I'm seeing at this stage. You know, be wrong to judge a bird now. And one of the things that I'm doing 
a number of the birds, uh, take them from weaning, I'll evaluate them, uh, and then some of those birds will get singled off depending on whether the cage space is available. Some of those birds will get moved down into the flight cages at the bottom. And those flight cages, you know, it's not, they're in there and they're forgotten about, far from it. I'll catch the birds up from there, I will look at them, I'll study them, I'll evaluate them in the training cages just to get a real good look and see whether I think that they're birds that are going to make the show team to uh, see whether I think that they're going to be birds that will be retained for next year. So that's where we are with the fights. We've got, as I say, some really good numbers and um, more importantly we've got some really, really nice quality. From the fights, well, it's that time. Let's jump to the to-do list. Many fanciers will know this part of the year, well, it's the molt or it's the start of the molt and it's all about sweeping up feathers. Uh, on our to-do list this month, really it's about getting birds successfully through the molt. Um, for me, three things, three key things. First thing, baths. Baths as often as is practically possible. I try and give mine twice, three times a week during the molt. If I can do more, then I will do more. Uh, they can't have too many baths. Remember, the molt is the annual replacement of feathers, and a bath will encourage a bird, once it's bathed, to preen. And that preening brings the feather oils through, and that will help the process along. The second thing, well, that's about keeping the egg food up. I give uh, all of the birds, the young fifes, all of the birds in the room are still getting egg food. Um, the egg food's packed full of vitamins, minerals. I add extra things to it as well to, uh, to really help boost them. And the third and final thing for the malt, calcium. I'm giving calcium three times a week in the water and I'm also giving a multivit and apple cider vinegar as well. So give the birds everything they need. The malt is one of those times when, you know, the weak birds, they're not gonna make it through the malt. So we've gotta make sure that the birds have got everything that they need to make it through a successful malt. Of course, with birds like the Norwich, this is the annual replacement of feathers and they need colour feeding. Uh, we will go down and see Keith Ferry again over the course of the next um, few weeks of that episode. Keep an eye out for that and that will be on colour feeding. But Keith has very, very kindly done a little, uh, little explainer video to us now of some of the things he does in the meantime. So without further ado, over to you Keith. Once you've weaned your birds and they're between six to eight weeks old, first round eight weeks, second round six weeks, and you don't want to be mixing colour food and soft food for the last round, keeping it the same mix. What I recommend to all novices is an easy way to start is always use carafil orange, carafil orange, put some in a pepper pot, and just sprinkle it as if you're peppering your dinner. It's an easy way, so it's uh, foolproof. And any novices, it's the easy way until you get used to uh, with the Norwich. Before you start mixing it any other way that's what I would recommend uh, so simple and, and uh, for me I would do it um, until most of the birds are ready for molting it's saved me mixing two lots of soft food As you can see, the birds are still straight on it. They're used to the soft food, what they've been reared on, and obviously they take up some of the carafil. You do use more carafil if you stick to this right through the season, um, but it's, like I said, it's foolproof. 
Really appreciate Keith taking the time and, and, and sharing the information that he's got. And I've been out and bought myself a little pepper cellar as well for that. So we're, um, that's it really for, for this month. Of course, when I talk about the malt, I'm really only talking about the canaries because the native finches, well, they're still rearing young. And some of them, as we can see here, are still looking back to go into nest. So it's that time. It's the Native Diaries. It's uh, rapidly becoming one of your favourite parts of the show. Uh, I really, really appreciate you, um, all of your kind words regarding the Native Diaries. Uh, as always, a bit of a mixed bag. Let's start with those pesky little red poles, shall we? Um, it's been, a, it's been a good season for the red poles. We can see here, we've got a hen uh, who's feeding a nest. Um, she's got four in there. This is seven eggs. Four of them were, f uh, seven of them were all full, I should say. Um, but unfortunately, one, two were dead in shell and one didn't make it beyond hatching, but she's feeding them lovely. She's eating me out of pinkies, something rotten. The rest of the red poles, well, they've all gone back down to nest again. Um, the uh, cobalt hen, uh, she was sat on six eggs. Um, she wasn't happy sitting on them and she got off. So they are currently under a yellow mosaic. Uh, whether or not the yellow mosaic will rear them, I don't know, but I didn't want to bin them. I didn't want to throw them away. So she is back down, she's laying. The other white wings, they're laying as well. So we'll see, we'll see how they're young birds, they this year's birds. So really it can take some time for the birds to reach that kind of sexual maturity. So often in the first year they'll mess around and it's in years two and years three and onwards that you'll see some results, particularly with the native finches. Um, that's certainly been the case with the goldfinches. Um, all on flighted birds. This year, they've picked up, they've built, but we've got no further than that. So they're a project very much for next year. When it comes to the Siskin pair, well, I've just put the new nest pans in for them, as you can see here now. Um, got three away. They're looking quite fit and active, the Siskins. You'll recall the last time we were in the canary room, they were, um, they were rearing uh, uh, what turned out to be a siskin and what turned out to be uh, a couple of red poles as well. Um, the hen just went off and went over. The weather got really, really hot and close. And although I have the extractor, the window, the air purifier, a lot of different mechanical devices, electrical devices in here to try and keep things going, I'm constantly spraying the room, just lost interest. And, uh, and that's been the case with you know, a number of birds, certainly with the canaries as well. So um, that's the, uh, the, the goldfinches and the siskins. We've got some siskins on the sticks. We've got some um, really, really nice looking red poles as well away. So I'm really pleased with that. That's got some good numbers for next year to do a selection from and there'll be some stock available to move on as well. So that's all good. Um, and then, of course, it comes down to, to the bullfinches. Well, the, the bullfinch uh, Norwich muling pair, um, they've not produced any full eggs as yet. N no great surprise. Um, can be a real challenge to get those birds moving forward. So I'm not unduly concerned about that. The straight pair of bullfinches, well, it's been a different story with them. Uh, we have got the four young now away. Uh, they're away, they're feeding themselves, they're separated off from the parents. Um, and hopefully, you know, nice straightforward molt and we'll see them on the other side. Very, very much looking forward to that. The adult pair, they'd um, gone back to nest and, and laid six eggs. I don't know whether it was the cock. Uh, I think it probably was. I'm not sure it was the hen, but a couple of days before they were due, pff, eggs were turfed. They were full heartbreak absolute heartbreak and that's part of bird keeping you know the heartache of it we just have to dust ourselves off have to go again we have to look at what we've done 
look if we'd done anything different in that situation. I couldn't see I'd done anything different. She is, as we can see from the footage now, she is picking up again. She's looking to go to nest again. I will let her go down again, see how she gets on, see if we can get some. And maybe this time I'll separate the cockbird off. But it just goes to show you with the native finches, indeed with any birds, that they can change between rounds. There are so many different factors that can influence them that just because they've been poor in one round doesn't mean that they'll be poor in a second. And similarly, just because they've been great in one round doesn't necessarily mean they'll be great in another. Speaking of not great, outside's been, well, forgettable. We've had the uh, the birds, the, the green finches, they look like they've gone to nest. Again, with the weather, soaring temperatures, then cold nights, they've just not, not gone at all. So again, it's the long game with those. We'll persevere and keep on going. It's the long game with this next lot too. It's time for the Norwich Notebook. With the Norwich, I was chatting to Keith the other day and, and, and with the Norwich he said, you know, as soon as the birds drop flight feathers, that's pretty much it. The cockbirds won't fill eggs once they've dropped flight, flight feathers. Well, ours, as you can probably tell behind you, it's like a burst mattress here, have. Um, what we've got, which is quite interesting, is one of the pairs up here are, um, have laid. Uh, they've laid four eggs now. Um, I've just left them to it. The rest I've pulled the pans out of. Uh, I will put them together at some stage and, and look to molt them out um, together and then obviously give them the appropriate colour food. Um, I've wondered and awed about that actually, whether I, I have no intention of showing these birds, so whether to colour feed them or not, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll think about that, we'll see. Maybe hit the comments below, say what you think. Um, so the Norwich, it's been, you know, it's been an okay season with the Norwich. I've got um, a couple away that I've just taken away that are feeding themselves, which is uh, always a pleasing sight. Um, and I've got four away uh, of a relatively well-developed stage. So obviously they've all got to get through the molt. So that's half a dozen. There's uh, more full eggs up there as well. So who knows if, you know, ideally I was looking to get into double figures, but if we don't this year, we will next, I'm sure. So the Norwich are there. They are um, a thing of, uh, of real beauty. And, uh, and well, let's take a closer look at one of them. It's this week's Bird of the Week. So this week's Bird of the Week it is uh, a Norwich that we bred from the, the bird that we got in from Keith. Um, and, and I mean, it's only the second time this bird's been in a show cage, but I think, you know, what we can safely say is it, it knows how to, to show itself off, um, which is good, R really, really good. You know, I'm really pleased with the quality of this bird. I know it's very, very early on, um, very early on to be drawing conclusions about quality, but for me, it looks like it's a decent bird. It looks like it'll turn out to be uh, a nice Norwich, um, certainly a useful addition as I look to develop the lines of Norwich here in the Canary Room. Um, this one looks like it will uh, it will form part of that moving forward. So let's have a good old look at it now. It's this week's Bird of the Week. It's one of our young 2021 bred Norwich Canaries. Our uh, final final feature today is, of course, the new colour corner. Um, 
Pinnacle to you with the new colours. We've got um, the uh, one of the red black grey wings now. She's got um, six young under her. There's a grey wing under there and uh, five fifes, I think. Um, so she seems to be doing a really good job of those. The yellow mosaic at the bottom, she's got a couple of her own eggs as well as uh, the red pole eggs. And the pair here have just started to lay again, which is, um, which is uh, you know, unexpected, but uh, I'll probably, it's a little bit late, but I'll, I'll probably let them sit and let that go. The, um, the young, the, the grey wings, the yellow mosaics, well, they're all in the wire cages, they're being colour fed. They're elsewhere. Let's take a, a quick look at them now. There's not a great deal to look at. They're not overly spectacular at this moment in time, but once they're all coloured up, they most certainly will be. Been a real pleasure, the new colours this year. A real, real pleasure and an awful lot of interest in them. So thanks for everybody who's got in touch. Well, it's the end of another show. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up to the video as well. Hit the comments below. Try and reply to every all of the comments that are down there. Coming up over the next couple of episodes, we will be on the road. Next up, we're at Bernard Williams's. Uh, incredible setup, an incredible man. Um, really, really enjoy that. It's almost an hour with Bernard Williams looking at the history of bird keeping as well as his current setup and the current birds that occupy his incredible flight. I think I may have said incredible a few times. And then we're off to the Glen Arif Pedigree Livestock down in the beautiful countryside in Norfolk. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful episode. Um, really, really look forward to, to bringing that to you and getting to see all of the stuff that Nick and Annalyn Barrett and their family are doing down there. Um, we will continue in the Canary Room. We'll do another update from here, uh, probably sometime in August. But until next time, everyone, thanks for watching. Take care.